Hey guys, my name is Grace. I'm the creator of Satin Aroma Home Fragrance Company where I sell wax melts and candles. I wanted to come on today and just kind of, I guess, give you guys an update and take you along as I get ready to test or make some more candles to test out. Y'all, why is candle testing so difficult? I don't know. Okay, so first I think most of the people that watch my videos are candle makers or you know you make wax melts or you just you, you're into arts and crafts so I think you guys could probably relate but my experience with candle testing so far has been a long process maybe some people get it right on their first candle but that has not been my story <laughs> I have been testing for months now and I'm still working on my candles I feel like I'm very close like I, I feel like I'm very close to getting the candle exactly how I want it but I'm just not there yet but I'm very very close so it it literally is a process like I've gone through five or six waxes I've gone through multiple wig series um multiple well okay so starting off if you've watched my videos you know that I wanted to use these candle tins or these tins for my candles I just love them I think they're so cute I love the gold color um, these are four ounces as I was testing my candles I was like or as I was testing these cans these tins I was like mm, I feel like I want a bigger candle so I chucked these to the side and I got a bigger jar so I went with this jar here which is this jar is from the flaming candle company company it's a nine ounce amber colored jar love it love it love it um, I think it's gonna look very well with the theme of my candle line I love the way that the flame looks in this jar when it's burning especially when it gets towards the middle of the jar it looks like the like the, the jar is glowing it's just so pretty so I've been testing my candles in these now the flame and candle company is out of stock of these jars and they do not know they don't have an ETA or estimated date in when um, these candle jars are going to be back in stock so I had to go to another company to buy some more amber colored jars and these jars are different I knew that they would be different because I know every company uses different manufacturers like I knew the jars wouldn't be the same um, but I can really pick up on the differences in these jars for one I don't know if it's picking up on camera but this jar here is a little darker than the jar from the flame and candle company they're both still very beautiful jars like I both I like both of them but there are slight differences this jar has a wider mouth than this jar or a wider opening so because of that that could potentially affect the way that my candle burns with the wick series that I'm using for the candle jars that I get from the flaming candle company and that's the thing with like candle testing that I'm learning and finding out. If you change anything in your process or in the way that you make your candle, like if you change the candle jar or you change the wick or the wax, it can throw everything off. So that's why testing is so important. So, <laughs> um, but like I said, I'm very close. I'm very, very close. Actually, I'm making a full size jar today so a full tester today all of my other testers have been half jar testers um, because I've been trying to make sure that the candle burns well in the middle and that it doesn't burn too hot all of my um, test jars so far in these jars have been half jar testers I feel like I just said jar like 50 times within the last minute um, so they've been half jar testers today I'm doing a full jar 
in the new containers that I got from a different company. So I'm going to see if the Wick series works well in this jar as well. Hopefully it does. I'm not really worried about the Wick series. I'm just so more, I'm, I'm just more so worried about um, the size of the wick. Like I think the wick series will work fine. I'm just concerned about whether I'll have to wick up or wick down within that wick series. I'm going to take you guys along with me as I, and this, this video is super random. I just decided to come on here because I was like, man, I need to start documenting this whole process because one day I'm going to get to the point where I have like the candle exactly how I want it. And yeah and i it'll be nice to look back on another thing before i get into labeling these candles i am not trying to make a perfect candle i truly believe that there is no perfect candle out there i feel like there is going to be even if it's the slightest thing i think that every candle has something that's not perfect about it so my goal is to make a safe candle that burns well a safe candle that burns well um i've also like tested out different candles from other candle companies just to kind of see how other candles burn and there are some great candles out there like a lot of the candles that i've tested out have been very very nice candles that burn well don't produce that much soot but as a candle maker now and knowing like how a candle should burn, I'm able to pick up on certain things that like your your customer probably wouldn't pick up on because before I became a candle maker, I was not concerned about anything that I'm looking at now as I'm making candles. I wasn't concerned about like the candle lights. Now I, I recognize soot and I would notice that but I didn't know that, you know, I wasn't like, oh, you know, well, that candle's sitting, so that's not a good candle. You know, it's not burning properly. It's not burning the best that it could. Or I wasn't checking the jar temperature, anything like that. I wasn't checking to see how the candle was burning, you know, checking the milk pool, checking to see how even everything was. I wasn't concerned about any of that because I didn't know, you know, that those things influence how well your candle burns. Um, but now that I have this knowledge of making candles and how things or you know, kind of how things you, how you want things to look, I'm like picking up on small things that, you know, your customer probably wouldn't even recognize or be concerned about. But now that I know those things, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I want to try to make a, the safest candle that I can make um that burns well that's my goal like i'm not trying to make a perfect candle i just want to make a safe candle that burns well so that is my goal all right guys so what i'm doing is i'm going to be labeling these these candle jars um this is the process that has that i've been doing now probably for like the last three or four weeks as i've been testing these candles um, I just use a post-it note, right? On the post-it note is um, the wax that I'm using, the wick. Um, I use, I write down the fragrance oil load. And I also, if I'm doing a mixture, like if I'm mixing two or three fragrance oils together to create my own scent, then I write down the percentage of each fragrance oil that I use. And I write down the date that I pour the candle. There are six fragrances in my um, candle line, but I'm making nine candles today because I'm testing um, three of the candles I'm making two different candles for because I'm testing out two different wicks. So I'm making nine in total. So let's get to it. Oh, and then one more thing I wanna show you guys. So this is like a whole production, right? Like I'm trying to, as I'm making my candles and testing them, I'm also thinking about how I want to design my label for these jars and how I want the candle to look um, as far as the lid that I put on it because I want everything to tie in well with my brand. So I have um, bought three different colors, gold, black, and white to test out on these candle tins to see which one I like the best. So let me show you guys. This is white. I actually think that looks pretty cool. Like I like the contrast of the black, of, of the white and the brown. 
it gives something to me like it, it just it stands out for some reason I like it but it really would depend on what my label looks like I think once I get my label printed and know what my label looks like then I'll be able to really decide on the top so this is black you know this is very classic to me it's very sleek it's very clean looking the black and the brown don't clash like I think it flows well together and then of course most people use the gold um, lid for these amber jars and I mean I think it looks good I think this is probably my favorite one um, but so many people use it that I kind of want to make it different so that's the only thing but like I said I really think it's gonna boil down to what my label looks like said I think most of the people that watch my channel are candle makers um, so how do you guys feel about the wickless half jar candle test so like when you pour your candle to the halfway point on your candle jar and you test it to see how the candle burns at that halfway point um, when you do it that way do you secure your wig with a wick sticker or do you do a wickless candle test me personally the way i've been doing it is wickless so that i can you know if one wick doesn't work i can switch out to you know either wick up or wick down but the problem that i have with it like i i love that whole idea and it sounds great but the problem that i've been running into is the lower it burns my wick ends up falling over into the wax like because it doesn't have anything to keep it steady or to hold it in place so I can't complete the testing the way that I want to because the wick doesn't stay standing up it always falls over into the wax so I might get a good like four or five hour burn out of the candle before the wick actually topples over so then it's like my entire testing is paused I have to a lot of times I have to try to dig out the wax the wick so like for this one I was testing this candle it's a half jar so I filled the wax up to the halfway point and I poured it as a wickless candle and the wick you know just fell right on into the wax before I could you know blow it out and take the wick out myself so I wasn't able to really complete the testing on this one the way that I wanted to I mean I did but I had to go through an extra step of like, you know, trying to pull that wet, that wicks out, putting in a new wig and then starting the process over again. You know, at the end of the day, I was able to get the information that I needed, but I just kind of feel like, I think going forward, if I do another half jar test, I will, but if I secure my wick, then I'm not gonna be able to switch out the wicks if I need to. So what do you guys think about half jar testing? Do you do it wickless or do you do it um, with the wick, like where you actually secure the wick? Let me know how you guys handle your half jar testing though. I would be very interested to just hear from other candle makers like how you go about doing your half jar tester. All right, what else do I wanna talk to you guys about? Um, so I get all of my information from YouTube you know there are a lot of candle candle makers on YouTube that I pull information from and then Facebook groups are very helpful there are so many candle making Facebook groups um, you know there are general candle making Facebook groups and then you have like individual like if you use a certain type of wax a lot of times those um, candle groups exist where like for people who only use like coconut 83 there's a group for that um, so yeah i pull all my information from you um, from youtube and facebook so i am not the person to come to for your candle questions because i am learning myself y'all i am figuring this thing out as i go along and i'm just kind of documenting my journey and uh, the facebook and youtube has been so so helpful all right so let me go ahead and start labeling these candles so that i can get some things done Alright guys, so I got my candle jars labeled 
And so now I'm getting ready to wick my jars. I got a fun new gadget. Um, this is the wick setter. I think that's what it's called. Wick setter. I got it from Kindle Science. Um, I've been testing all of my jars just by eyeballing the center, the center of my jar. But I decided to go ahead and get this little gadget just to make sure that um, the wick is in the center because that can also affect your test like when you're testing your candles if your wick is not centered um it can throw off like your milk pool and possibly cause your candle to like on the on one side to not burn down as even as the other side so i went ahead and invested in this it was only like 23 dollars, but that's still you know a good amount of money um so i'm gonna go ahead and use this cool little gadget and set all of my wicks so i hope i have enough wicks guys uh oh i might need to i might need to order some more wicks i think i'm gonna have enough because i ordered a sample pack and the sample pack that i got long star what is it long Lone Star Candle Supply, they have really good sample kits for your wicks. Like pretty much they offer, a, they sell a lot of different type of wick series. So I bought um, just a lot of sample sets from there. So I actually think I'm gonna be okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm, yeah, I'm gonna be good. I need to clean my desk. I'm just like, I'm gonna clean it, but just not right now. Of course, I found that the more organized I am, the better. And most of the times my desk never looks like this, but I literally had candles in every room in my apartment. And one day I just gathered all of the candles that I was testing and I just brought them all in here and placed them on my desk and I haven't put them anywhere. So that's why all these candles are on my desk right now. Um, that's another thing when it comes to testing candles <laughs> i don't know if this is anybody else's experience but i literally have candles in every room in the bathrooms in the kitchens in the bedrooms everywhere because i'm trying to test my candles in different areas to see how they burn to see how the scent throw is to see how far the scent spreads so that's another thing um my husband is super patient because he doesn't like complain or say anything about all the candles that I have laying around so it's a lot of them and I and they've been laying around for some months now because I've been testing for a long time all right now I need to find my wick tab. so got my wick tabs now I'm gonna set my wick first time using this wick setter so let's just see how it goes so all you have to do is just take one of your wicks and take a wick sticker I always kind of rub my wick sticker down real good onto my wick or on onto the yeah onto the wick so that I know that it's on there nice and tight or stuck on there really good all right, so then you just push your little wick through this wick sticker. And what's really cool is this little thing right here is a magnet. So it holds your wick in place so that it doesn't fall down when you push it over like that. Um, you just place it. I've already set this so to um, fit my jar. So it's really simple. You just press down. This is my first time using this, but it's literally like super simple to use. Cool. And it's supposed to be like a perfectly centered wick. Tell me guys what you think. Does it look centered? Let me know what you think. So I'm gonna do that for all of them now. It looks pretty centered to me yeah looks good all right so i'm just gonna do that for all of them now i'm gonna be mad at myself when i go and edit this video and see my messy desk knowing that i'm gonna put this on the internet 
I know I'm gonna be mad at myself, but I'm trying to document my journey and the journey is not always pretty, it is not always neat and everything clear and organized and put into its place. So it is what it is. I wanted to make a video because I haven't made one in a while. And like I said, I just really want to document my journey. So, um, okay, here, here, I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. test um, now all I have to do is go and pour the candles mix my fragrance oils mix them with the wax pour them let them sit and then I'll be able to test them after you know it takes some time for your candles to cure but that's another thing you have to wait a long time for your candles to cure and with most waxes which also adds to the amount of time that it takes for you to test but anyways it's all good um, all right, so I'm going to end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!